Hi, this is Debbie with Impression 5 Science Center, and I'd like to welcome you to Sensory Friendly Science. This is our chance to connect with you and do a sensory friendly, sensory exploration activity at a time when you're not able to come into the Science Center. And today I'd like for us to do painting using scents from spices. So let's take a second first and do our sensory audit where we talk about uh, what senses we're going to explore with and what you'll what you expect. Paint is liquidy and we, when we paint with it we do sometimes get it on our hands so be aware of that. Some of my friends love that and love to finger paint. Some of my friends do not and put on gloves so that they don't get any of the paint on their hands. Uh, just be aware that the paint is paint. Sometimes it gets on us. Um, paint does also have a smell to it. Some people like the smell, some people don't, but just be aware it does have a little bit of a smell. And while we're talking about smells, spices have a smell, that's why we're using them. Uh, sp some spices smell really good to some people, some of them smell bad. Which ones you like and dislike is very personal, so you can decide which ones you want to use based on that. And some of them smell only a little bit, and some of them smell really strong. Um, one note here for your spices, you can definitely smell it. I can open my container of cinnamon and I can smell it. But what I do not want to do, I do not want to put my face deep in this and take a deep breath in and sniff really hard. Because the little bits of cinnamon go into your nose and it kind of burns and it can be uncomfortable. So smell your spices from a little bit of a distance, not right up in them. Um, so feeling, smelling, uh, we won't be hearing much other than just the normal things. Uh, seeing we're using paint, so you're gonna have lots of things to look at. And we are not going to taste anything. Spices smell delicious because we use them in foods, but they do not taste good and they're not really good for you to eat on their own generally. So let's take a minute and talk about spices and what they are. Spices have been used for a very long time by people for two important reasons. One, they make food taste good. And two, they help preserve foods. So sometimes a spice added to something can help preserve a food and keep it from spoiling. And we mostly use spices for taste and you'll find that they're all sorts of spices and they come from all over the world and they're generally made from parts of plants. So my cinnamon here is ground up from the bark of a tree. Uh, my parsley here are leaves that have been dried and that we uh, grind up and put in a container for me to shake onto things. Uh, we have onion powder, which is basically onions that have been ground up and dried up. And we have all sorts of different spices that come from different places. Um, and they're made from different parts of a plant. We also have extracts and oils. So here is my vanilla extract and the vanilla bean from a type of orchid can be put in alcohols and distilled down until we get its flavor. This is imitation vanilla extract, so it has a slightly different origin, but that same sort of vanilla flavor. Or peppermint extract, where you can grow mint leaves. And mint leaves can be used by themselves as a spice, or they can be put into a liquid and made into an extract that we add to things. And I found that there are, I could kind of divide my spices into two types. There are spices I associate with sweet things, and there are spices I associate with savory or umami uh, type things. When we say spice, a lot of times those are the things you think about. You think of things that are hot, like pepper and peppers, and they can burn your tongue and they can have that delicious spicy flavoring. Um, and other things we add to things like cookies. And you can use both types I found I liked how my painting smelled better if I used either my sweet spices like vanilla and nutmeg and cloves or my savory spices like garlic and onion and cumin. But you pick however you want to mix it. All of them will work out to make something deliciously smelling, um, but they can be savory or sweet. Our next thing to talk about is paint. And we think of paint as being something we use to color things and make art, which is absolutely true. That's what I do with paint. 
but we also paint things to protect them. We paint things that are metal to keep them from rusting, and we paint things that are wood to keep them from rotting. And that takes me to the first thing that's in our paint, and our first thing is pigment. And pigment is our color. And when you think of things that are painted a bright color, one of the things you might think of are barns. And barns are big and red. One of the reasons they're red is because red is a very cheap and easy pigment. When people were trying to pre uh, prevent the wood on their barns from rotting, they needed to paint it. And a basic paint that you could make really cheap by yourself involved some lime and some spoiled milk, and then a colorant, a pigment. And that pigment is rust, iron oxide. So rust, that rust red color is traditionally the color of barns because it was a really easy color to make by yourself. And you can add colors to your paints. If I take my turmeric here and I add a lot of turmeric to white paint, that paint is going to be this bright yellow orange color that turmeric is. If I take my paprika and I add it to white paint, I get this great red paprika -y color. So you can add colors with your spices, or you can use the pigments that are already in paint. So I have purple, there's a purple pigment in this one and a yellow pigment in this one. Second thing we have is a binder. A binder is what makes it stick. Um, if you water down paint too much, you lose the binder and it might still look okay, but it will start flaking off and not stick well. If you take something, here's one that I did of, I just took water and I painted on this piece of paper and I sprinkled cinnamon on it. And look, I've got a cinnamon picture. But when this water dries, all of the cinnamon is going to be loose and I can just brush it all off and it will disappear. So that's a neat way to make a painting, but not if you're going to want to keep it. And the third thing we have is the solvent. And the solvent is what you dissolve all of the things in your paint into. And it's really important. Now, for what I prefer to do, I prefer water-soluble paints. Um, all of the tempera paints you can buy and watercolors that you can buy are all water-soluble paints. And that means that there's water in them. And when we paint something, you've got your pigment and your binder, and then your water is your solvent. And then that's when the exciting science happens of your paint dries and that solvent evaporates up into the air and you've got left behind your binder and pigment, which is why you've got a beautifully colored picture and your solvent is gone. Now, some things use other solvents. I can use oil paints and they use an oil-based solvent and they take longer to dry and they create a different effect. You're welcome to use things like that, but they often have a stronger smell and they're not as washable. So I prefer using washable paints. And you can use a whole bunch of different kinds of paints. So if you don't have the right paint, you can work with whatever you've got. The basic poster paints, acrylic, uh, the washable tempera paints, you, the craft paints, those work just fine. Uh, so do the acrylics like this. They work fine as well. I found that watercolors like this worked, but were kind of hard to work with. It was easier if you had watercolors, if you had liquid watercolors. Um, and if you didn't have any of those, there is an option for using a puffy paint like this. And you can put your puffy paint on a surface, and then you can sprinkle spices on top of it, and it sticks. So this is puffy paints with pepper stuck to it. Kind of cool looking in its own way, so you're welcome to do that. And glue can be used that way as well. You can use glue to draw something and then sprinkle your spices on top of it. You can also use glue basically as paint and add your spices to it to be a color and to mix your spices in there for the scent. Uh, paints like this also work. So these are some leftovers we have from a craft project. So you can use all sorts of different paints. So let's stop and talk about what we need. You need paper to paint on, whichever type you'd like. You need something to put your paints in or on. You can use a palette like this. You could use a piece of cardboard or something heavy to put it on. Uh, ice cube trays make great palettes. And so do egg cartons. Egg cartons are my favorites. So you need something to put your paint in. You need paint, whichever type you choose. 
you need spices. You don't need to have as many spices as I have out here. I put out a lot, so if I needed to talk about them, we had lots of choices. You can use as few spices or as many spices as you want. You can have all of your paints smell like vanilla, and you'd have a very vanilla painting. You could use different spices and different colors, however you want to do that. You need something to paint with. Um, you can use finger paints. You can have a brush, uh, any type of brush. I've got a variety. Uh, sometimes I use things like popsicle sticks to paint with as well. So paint, spices, something to paint with, something to paint on. So I took my egg carton and I already added some paints to it. So I've got paints here, different types. Uh, down here, these are not paints. These two are my white glue added. And I found that when you measure about a quarter of a teaspoon is about right for most of your spices, but it doesn't have to be super exact. I found that you can add a little bit more or a little bit less. So I'm going to add spices and I think I am going to add um, sweet spices here and savory spices here to make those colored. So I'm going to take my glue and I'm going to add some turmeric to it. And my turmeric is a very bright colored spice. Um, it can make you, it can be used to color things. And I'm going to add some of my turmeric to that glue. Because I'm adding it to glue, it might need a little bit more than I'd normally add. And I'm going to take my paprika and add it to my other glue. And my paprika is bright red. And I'm going to stir those. I'm using a popsicle stick as my stirrer. Glue can be tricky to stir because it's sticky. So here is my one with turmeric. And I'll grab a fresh popsicle. And I'm mixing my paprika. So those are both a glue that I'm using as a paint. And let's see, I think I'm going to make my orange be cinnamon. And I think I'm going to make my white be vanilla. And I'm going to have my yellow be nutmeg. Now, one of the reasons I made my white be vanilla is because I didn't want to add something that was going to change the color of my white paint. If I added nutmeg to my white paint, it would probably get a bit of the nutmeg color in it, which is fine. It just wasn't necessarily what I wanted to do. I'm going to add cloves to my green. And I have an essential oil here that's a vanilla type flavor that I'm going to add to my purple. Now I have to mix those all. And you can use lots of different things to mix. I sometimes use the wrong end of my paintbrush as a mixing tool. And I did put out here a glass of water and a towel so I can wipe it off between colors. I don't mix my colors too much. So now I have smelling paints. And I found that these do a decent job of still smelling when they're dry, but they're also fun to play with the smells while you're painting with them. So I'm going to set my paint, my paint tray right over here and get out my paper. And let's see, what should I paint? I'm going to take my yellow 
which I can definitely smell, smells deliciously uh, nutmeggy. And I'm going to add a sunshine. You can see the spice in the paint. It looks a little bit clumpy. I'm okay with that. Um, if you are, uh, don't want clumpy, the extracts make it a little bit less clumpy than some of the other, um, than some of the spices do. And I found that spices that were powdered, like paprika or cinnamon, worked a little better than things like parsley that are kind of uh, big and leafy. And let's see, what else should I add to here? Uh, I have, ooh, I have green with cloves in it. And I'm going to add a stem and a leaf for my plant. And I'm going to add the top part of what's going to be a tree here. There we go. You can still see it's a little clumpy. I'm going to add. Oh, I've got my purple, which is my uh, extract. I'm going to add flower up here. And I'm going to use my white vanilla to add a center to my flower. I know I'm painting white on white, but that way I can get the smell of my vanilla into my painting as well. And I'm going to grab a second piece of paper here. And I'm going to use, the, on this piece of paper, I'm going to use my glues. So here is my turmeric glue. It's also going to be a sunshine. I'm using a big fat brush for this because I kind of liked it, um, but also because the glue is a little bit stickier to work with. So there's my turmeric sunshine and I'm going to add to it the orangey color from my paprika because turmeric and paprika are great together and it lets me make a red orange sunshine instead of just the orange it was or the yellow it was before. And remember, this is glue that I'm using to paint this. This actually didn't have any color in it until I added this. This is white Elmer's glue, and you can see that I've added paprika to my turmeric. And if I smell this, it smells like glue, but it also smells like the paprika y turmeric smell that goes with some of the savory dishes that I might put in chicken at my house. And what I found is that if you take these paintings and you let them dry, you can still smell them afterwards. This is my first attempt at spice painting. And there is cinnamon in my sunshine. And there is vanilla in my water. And you can still smell them after they've dried. And you can do all sorts of experiments with this. You can use something uh, like glue and see what you can add to it to make colors. But you could try other things as binders. Uh, you could mix this paint, the spices, with something like vanilla pudding and paint with that. Although you might not want to keep that picture because it might the pudding might spoil eventually. Uh, you could try things like lotions or olive oil or lots of other things to work with and see if they work as a binder. Uh, you can also use more colorings. You could use your cinnamon to color paint. You could take white paints and mix them with all the different spices to see what you could do. And you can try sprinkling things on top. And I found that this was kind of neat too. If I take uh, my paint here, let's see, I've got yellow right here. I'm going to add so just get out some yellow paint that doesn't have any scent added to it. And if I take my brush here, And I paint with my yellow paint, I'm just going to make some squiggles. I can then take something like my cinnamon and sprinkle it on top of my yellow paint. Here's my cinnamon yellow paint and I'm going to shake it off a little bit 
and you can see where it's stuck to it and it will stick to that and smell and it's kind of neat looking and so I could add other things to this while I've still got paint I didn't cover quite all of it so then if I take nutmeg nutmeg is one of my favorite spices I love how it smells and I love all sorts of foods from around the holidays at my house that are made with nutmeg so if I add nutmeg to it as well now I've got cinnamon and nutmeg and the smell reminds me of eggnog. It smells delicious. And so both of those are there and the, as the paint dries, the spices tend to stick in that, which is also where you can use your puffy paints. And glues. If I grab my glue and my puffy paint right here, I can take my glue and draw a picture. I'm going to make a big spiral in glue. And then I can take my puffy paint and add some squiggles. I have glitter puffy paint today. Apparently green glitter. I kind of made a green blob. And I can take those as well. And let's do savory this time. Let's do pepper. I really liked how the pepper looked. Although pepper can be a very strong smell. But it looks kind of neat. Okay, I have peppered it. And then let's see, what should I use on the other side? I'm going to use the parsley. Because I found that, if, that the leafy ones don't work so well mixing the liquid. But they sometimes work stuck to the gluey ones. but you can experiment with that as well. And I'm going to shake this off. And look, you can see, first this was white glue and now it looks very peppery and it has a texture to it. And you can see the bits of leaf stuck to my glitter glue. And both of them smell, the parsley smells the fresh greeny smell that I associate with parsley. And the one with pepper kind of makes me feel like I need to sneeze. So you've got all of those things stuck. And th this artwork you should be able to use and save and it should still smell afterwards. The smell does fade with time because the um, smell gets released and over time the smell goes away a little bit. Um, but you can make uh, the paints mixed with things. You can save the paints if you want, but I found it was easier to uh, dispose of the paints and then make new ones the next time I wanted to paint. And like I said, you can use a whole variety of things. You can try sprinkling things on. You can try using different spices. Uh, one of the spices I didn't put out is this is coffee grounds. That works great with white paint to make a brownish color and it smells deliciously coffee-y if you like the smell of coffee. So we have all of these wonderful smells that we get to explore. And these are things that we use all the time but we don't usually use them like this. So I'd like you to be able to explore with any of the paints. And I thank you for working with me and for making paints with me. And I hope to see you soon at Impression 5.